Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening 5. Malaysia Airports Holdings announced that a consortium consisting of Alstom Transport Systems Malaysia, IJM Construction and Pestec Technology will be completing the Aerotrain replacement project. This confirms a report by The Edge published last month. In a statement, MAHB said it has entered into an agreement with Alstom and the IJMC Pestec JV to steer the Aerotrain replacement program back on track. Alstom and Pestec were the original contractors for the train replacement project. MAHB terminated the contract in August last year, citing Pestec being behind schedule as the reason. Under the new agreement, Alstom, the Aerotrain's original equipment manufacturer, will serve as the project coordination lead and be responsible for coordinating the works to recommence the project and deliver three new trains and two lines by the first quarter of 2025. According to MAHB, Alstom was given the prerogative to select their partners for works outside their scope and Alstom chose IJMC Pestec for work involving a civil engineering and train power supply components, among others. Nevertheless, Alstom will shoulder the majority of the scope of work in the project. To ensure project continuity and adherence to the original timeline, MAHB said this new contract with Alstom excluding operation and maintenance is expected to incur a cost increase capped at 15%, bringing the project cost to 456.1 million ringgit. This increase is attributed to interest holding costs, foreign exchange considerations, remobilization expenses, as well as project coordination fees to Alstom. MHB Acting Group Chief Executive Officer Mohamed Rastam Sharum said this is an acceptable variance for this project and allows it to get back on track. MHB said the decision to deliver three trains and completing both lines simultaneously allows for optimal replacement works to achieve the project completion date as originally planned. Meanwhile, Alstom Singapore and Malaysia Cluster MD Yan Maxindau said that the group is glad to resume work on this important national project in partnership with MHB and IJMC Pestec to ensure the timely delivery of the project and enhancing the travel experience at KLIA. The 25-year-old aerotrain was suspended in March last year following a major breakdown that stranded 114 passengers. The National Water Services Commission announced that water tariffs for domestic users in the peninsula and Labuan will increase an average of 22 cents per cubic metre, effective from February 1st. In a statement, Span said this water tariff adjustment is implemented in response to the needs and requests of the state governments. Nevertheless, Span will closely monitor to ensure that water service improvements align with the tariff increase. Span also said the water tariff adjustments governed by the tariff setting mechanism will standardise the tariff structure and components for the states in the peninsula and Labuan with a three-year review cycle to maintain consistency in fee determination. Span added that this increase in water tariff is still insufficient to cover the actual cost of providing water supply services amounting to one ringgit seventy five per CUM based on the actual record of 2022. However, through this tariff review, Span highlighted that water operators are better prepared to make continuous investments in developing water supply supply infrastructure, including building or upgrading water treatment plants, replacing obsolete pipes, conducting regular maintenance and improve their efficiency in addressing complaints. To mitigate the impact of the increase on people's monthly water bills, SPAN advised water supply operators in each state to continue existing initiatives, such as providing targeted assistance, including rebates to the B40 group. Bursa Malaysia ended lower on Wednesday in tandem with its regional peers, skittish over uncertainties with the US interest rate path, as well as the health of China's economy after the release of its 2023 gross domestic product, a dealer said according to Bernama. The FPM KLCI eased 2.66 points to 1,491.21 at market close, compared with 1,493.87 on Tuesday. On the broader market, degliners thumped gainers 832 to 265, while 300. 85 counters were unchanged, 761 untraded and 18 others suspended. Meanwhile, a handful of counters seemingly linked by individuals holding directorships in the companies tanked on Wednesday, namely Artronic, APB Resources, Globetronics Technology and Sarawak Consolidated Industries, succumbed to heavy selling pressure. They were among the top losers on Bursa Malaysia. Point of sale solutions provider Artronic was the seventh biggest loser for the day after nosediving to an intraday low of 49.6 cent for a loss of 30 
28%. Artronic was slapped with an unusual market activity query on Wednesday and told Bursa Malaysia that it was not aware of any corporate development that could have caused the UMA. Market watchers were at a loss to explain the erratic performance of the companies but observed that individuals Ki Ui Hyong, Ku Chong Hong and Kang Wei Lian hold director positions in these entities. Mercury Securities also received an UMA query after its share price plunged 40% to 45 cent, making it the latest out of a series of stocks on Bursa Malaysia to hit limit down on Wednesday. At 5 pm, it rebounded half a cent to settle at 45 and a half cent, which was still 39% lower than the previous day's close. The brokerage firm's stock dive came just a couple of days after it hit an all time high of 88.5 cent on Monday. Datuk Xiao Gim Shen, Mataku Assets Holdings and Bermas Holdings have emerged as the new substantial shareholders of Rexit after acquiring an aggregate of 92.27 million shares or a 53.27% stake for a total cash consideration of 78.43 million ringgit. In a statement issued by UOB Kehen Securities Malaysia on behalf of Rexit, the joint parties acquired the block of shares at 85 cent per share from three existing shareholders. They are Rexit Ventures, Global Hatabumi and the company's current chief, Dato Chung Hong Chong. According to the General Insurance Services Provider, Xiao serves as the chairman of Titan Pharmaceuticals, a publicly traded company on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Meanwhile, Matako is an investment holding company, whereas directors and substantial shareholders are Kong Tian Hui, Liu Qian Yong, and Chan Chao Lung. Bermas is also an investment holding company, and its directors and substantial shareholders are Chung Ching Chi, Chong Yok Xiang, Chong Xiao. Yung and Chung Yok Seng. The joint parties have agreed to maintain Rexit's listing status. Shares in Rexit closed unchanged at 92 sen, valuing the company at 174.19 million ringgit. Sarawak Consolidated Industries is in talks with the Sarawak state government over a potential land acquisition, the company said in a response to an unusual market activity query. This came after its shares hit limit down for the second day in a row. In a boss filing, SCIB elaborated that on January 4, 2024, it received the letter of offer from the Land and Survey Department of Sarawak to acquire some parcels of land measuring approximately 22 acres in size for the purpose of expanding the group's production capacity. SEIB adds that it is in the midst of discussion and considering the acceptance of this proposal and will release more details to the boards once a decision is made. Shares of SEIB had plunged by 35.93% or 30 cent and Wednesday at 53.5 cent, effectively wiping out all gains of the past three months. It was the second most actively traded stock on Bursa Malaysia with over 202 million shares transacted. This steep drop represents a significant loss of 65.5 cent or 55 percent from its 30-month high of 1 ringgit 19 that it saw on Monday, January 15th, wiping out more than 419 million in market capitalization. <music>